So Miami was uh, able to pull in a recruit uh, here in the past week, a, a guy that they're familiar with, a guy that they've been recruiting a long time that had committed prior to. And so uh, get us caught up on uh, one Allen Hay, a defensive tackle. Yeah, defensive tackle has actually been one of the places we've been producing some pretty good uh, talent and production as far as at the ACC level. But I mean, you have Kendrick Norton, you have R.J. McIntosh, you got Gerald Willis. Uh, and guys have been making some plays. Here. You have John Ford slowly, uh, Nesta Severa slowly. So uh, it's been a place that we've been developing talent. And Alan Hayne is a three-star defensive tackle uh, from Chaminade, Madonna, uh, down here in, uh, I think they're in Hollywood, if I want to say. Yeah, Hollywood, Florida. There you go. And um, he's a very aggressive-handed defensive tackle. I mean, if you watch his film, and of course it is a highlight tape, but if you watch his film, it's like, Play after play after play, he's the first one that engages. He's the first one that disengages and then goes to make a play uh, for Chaminade. So it's a place that we've had a lot of success bringing in defensive players, period. I mean, you had Keontre Smith. You have Gregory Rousseau. Um, you have our nickel corner. I am losing to Corey Couch. Yeah, all those guys have come from Chaminade over the last two years or so. So some of their best players have all been sent over to my, uh, Miami. So um, – Actually, no, that's not right. That's Chaminade. Shopping Yacht is where they are from. It's a whole different school. I apologize. Same, like, spelling, just the T in the, in the middle and the same colors. So it's a kind of a misconception of Chaminade and Chaminade, Shopping Yacht. But they're they're from Shopping Yacht. He's from Chaminade. Uh, we served up this topic a couple weeks ago. Didn't have time to uh, get the Wholesome One's take on this one. But uh, recruiting is obviously the lifeblood of every program. It certainly can be a drama, a soap opera, uh, a two- and three-year process of tracking these kids and where they're going to go and their preferences and their visits and the building of relationships from coach to player. And uh, it's an interesting process. And it's become more involved and complicated and much more out there in the public, obviously, with the, um, with the ascent of social media. So here's the one that uh, I presented to uh, Cam Underwood a few weeks ago, and I'll have a chance to hear from you. Who's the one that got away? Who is the one that, um, and, and you can certainly expand the list if you want to go past one, but uh, we'll start with number one in regards to, man, I really wanted this kid, knew he was going to be a player for us. We thought we had him. And in the days that led up to National Signing Day or maybe on that day, he just went on the other side. Has to be a, a young man that is living his dream right now. Uh, was a top 10 pick. He's from South Florida. Uh, at From Miami. Went to Columbus with one of our players who's in the draft also. Trajan Bandy. And I'm talking about C.J. Henderson. Chris Henderson, man. He was prototypical size, prototypical speed, as you saw at Florida. Um, man, I mean, committed to us for well over two years. And some happened. I mean, there's different stories that go on, uh, and you, you kind of got to be careful with that because you don't know what's the truth and what's not. But at the same time, a lot of stories go out about what happened and how we didn't get a chance to keep him on board with us. Uh, but he ended up going to the in-state rival, Florida Gators, and ended up being a ninth overall pick out of Florida. So therefore, you know, you think he would have done either something something similar or at least been a first rounder for us here. At Miami, I mean, six foot one, legit six foot one guy, legit sub four five, four four speed. I mean, tackling was a little iffy, but coverage, press man skills. CJ Henderson was top notch, man, and it and it hurt to lose him. Um, you know, we got Trajan Bandy, but he was a hardworking young man. But at the same time, he's five eight and whatever. But he gave his heart for Miami. But it would have been nice to have CJ Henderson opposite of him, or be able to have. Um, Bandy go to the nickel as a result of having CJ on the outside, man. But unfortunately, you look at it, a lot of these things, when it comes to these young men making those type of decisions, we as a program have to create a factory that these young men want to come and be a part of. And it's something that we are working on. It's not there yet. It's not done yet. But it hurts, but you can't really get mad at these recruits who choose some of the other schools because we have not been producing at that position as of late. That's just, that's a realistic approach to the situation. 
Who you else know? comes to mind in regards to who got away, whether it uh, was a huge disappointment at the time, and, mm-hmm. and maybe they didn't even turn out, but having at least going back to in the moment, you really oh, thought man. they were be a player, or certainly it's going to hurt even more if the guy like a C.J. Henderson turns out to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, maybe not even to that degree, but somebody who turned out to be a really good college football player that you thought was going to commit to the Canes and sign. Got you. I mean, I could even go back to Alex Collins who went to Arkansas and ended up, you know, tearing it up, which was super weird how that went down. You know, he was one of the first guys with the whole mother situation on ESPN. Like she snatched his LOI and was like, nah, we're going to Miami. <laughs> Just took off and, you know, she ran away with it. It was like really weird, but he ended up going to Arkansas. Um, even at that same position at running back, Dalvin Cook, I mean, Miami Central, uh, a guy that coming out of high school, Joe Yerby was ranked higher. You know, Joe Yerby was the guy. But Dalvin had the size. He had athleticism. He had to be shaped and molded. And then he turned out to be the much better football player. You know, one is still playing football right now. The other one is not. Um, if, I, if I'm going back even further, I would have to say Teddy Bridgewater also. I mean, what he was in Dade County, you know, as far as what Ja'Cory Harris was just a couple years before that, Teddy Bridgewater was even – was that and even more. And to have Randy Shannon be fired at the time that he was when those guys were committed to Miami, it, it had a ripple effect. I mean, you had him, you had Eli Rogers, you had uh, Kelvin Benjamin, who wasn't committed, who is the cousin of Travis Benjamin, who went here and played at Miami. Uh, he wasn't committed but had, on all accounts, said I was going to Miami if they had Teddy. You know, but he goes to Louisville. Eli Rogers ends up going to Louisville. Uh, Travis Benjamin goes up the road to Tallahassee. Uh, so it was a kind of a ripple effect all the way through uh, when it came to that situation. But those are kind of the guys off the top of my head. I mean, I could probably go on and on if I really sat and thought about it. Uh, but, I mean, we've won a couple of those recruiting wars. But to me, it was more of when we recruit these guys, a lot of them are coming because they want to come and start right now. We have to build a program to where young men respect it enough that they can come to Miami and take a red shirt. They can come to Miami and be a part of the growth process, not just come there because they know that they're going to get a starting job. And you have to build that. You have to build that respect amongst the recruits as a recruiter. And then once they sign with you as someone like, you know what, I'm going to trust this coach. He has the process broken down. He's been here for a while. I've known him for a while. I trust what he's going to put me in and the situation he's going to put me in. And I can foresee myself in that system making the same plays that the guys before me made. You haven't had that at Miami in a while. Hopefully Manny Diaz and his new staff can change that. 